Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing some technique building. I suggest you try this problem out for about 20-ish minutes and now let's begin. So this is a technique building problem. What do we do? We have x squared needs to be 3 to the power of y plus 7. Solve in the integers. So what happens if y is negative? Let's get that out of the way. If y is negative then this is like 1 over 3 to the power of something. This is a fraction. Plus 7 is going to still be a fraction. It cannot be a square of an integer. So that's just out of the way. Out of the way. If y is 1, let's see like what happens here when we play around. When y is 1, we're going to have, when y is 1, we have 3 plus 7, we have 10, is x squared? No, it doesn't have solution, but I missed something. What about y equals 0? Then we have 1 plus 7 is 8, not a square, boom. So, now what about y equals 2? Well, then we have y equals 2, we have 9 plus 7, which is 16. Oh, it's a square, it's equal to 4 squared, boom. So we have the first couple of them down. Now, what do we do with these sorts of problems? Well, at the, at the introductory level, I think even on some advanced levels, it goes down to, comes down to actually looking at some modular arithmetic when you have this sort of exponential thing, like an exponent here. So you need to you know, figure out some interesting remainder thing to look at. And here, the interesting thing is, say, Remainders when divided by 4. Because what do we have? We have 3 to the power of y gives a remainder of minus 1 to the power of y modulo 4. Plus 7. 7 also gives a remainder of minus 1. Right? So this is congruent to. So we have x squared is congruent to this modulo 4. Now, what are the remainders that x squared can give when divided by 4? And the answer is, well, if x is even, x squared is 0. And if x is odd, then x is of the form 2t plus 1. And then 2t plus 1 squared is equal to 4t squared plus 4t plus 1. In other words, it gives a remainder of 4. Now, truth be told, you could have also looked at this for a table. What is x congruence to and x squared congruence to modulo 4? 0, 1, 2, 3. And you have 0, 1, 0, 1. You could have done this both ways. Now, what happens when you look at modulo 4? Why is that interesting? I look at modulo 4 because I have minus 1 to the power of y. It's something that gives me information about y itself. And I like that. I like if I have more information about y, then I can figure out maybe it's parity or something like that. And here, I get that if y was odd, this would be minus 2 x squared cannot be minus 2 modulo 4. So if this is the case, that implies that y is congruent to 0 modulo 2. y must be what's it called even, because then x is going to be congruent to 0 modulo 4. And with that, which is also as we had with our solution where x squared is equal to 4. Also a reason why maybe it's important to look at a 4. Maybe that's a hint. I don't know. But to me, honestly, this is really much technique building. I tried this module, this module, this module, looking at different types of remainders. And now, what do I have? Y is divisible by 2. So now Y is equal to 2 times that. I invite you to push the problem further now for 5-10 minutes. See, what would you do next? And for me, personally, I see this. I go, great. I'm going to write this as a difference of squares. I'll have X squared minus 3 to the z squared, that's what I can do when I have 2 times z, is equal to 7. And now it's like x minus 3 to the z, and then x plus 3 to the z is equal to 7. Now, what do I have here? The answer is, I have a times b is equal to 7, where a and b are integers. 7 is a prime, this does not have a lot of possibilities. Now, furthermore, Notice that if x is a solution, so is minus x. We've sort of missed that over here. If x squared is 16, then it's also minus 4 squared. So now we can say, okay, if x is a solution, so is minus x. So let's get that out of the way. Let's only look at the positive solutions to x, or the non-negative ones. In this case, the positive because x isn't going to be 0. And we'll say, okay, so let's look at x as positive. Then this is positive. And so this must be also positive. And then we have two possibilities. One is that this is 1 and 7. And the other one is that this is 7, 7 here, and a 1 here. 
Now what? Now let's look at those. We need to look at those two cases. That's the next thing for us to do. And we have x minus 3y is 3 to the power of not y to the power of z is equal to, say, 7. And x plus 3 to the power of z is equal to 1. What do you do here? Well, you can go ahead and subtract and get figure out what x is. x then is equal to this plus this over 2, which gives you a 4. And then you might get a course, and then that forces what z needs to be. Actually, that's very totally valid. I, we can just do that. I usually think with these sorts of things, I subtract, so I get 3 to the power of something is equal to something. And when I subtract, I get 2 times 3 to the z is 6. So 3 to the z is equal to 3. In other words, z is equal to 1, which implies y is equal to 2. The reason that I'm doing this is because powers are usually more difficult to work with. They're more funky than these squares are. That's why. But it turns out both work well. I'm even learning something new. This is also why teaching is quite good. If you want to teach some, learn something, you want to teach it to somebody, and then you'll figure out, wait a second, I thought this was like that, but it's not always like that. This is a counterexample to what I thought was true. And then bam, you learn something new. So this is the first case, and we'll get x is, um, y is equal to 2, and then x is equal to 4, and then we have the minus 4 solution. And in the other case, we have x plus 3 to the power of z is equal to 1, x minus 3 to the power of z is equal to, oh, wait a second, 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 wait a second. When I subtract this, I don't get 6, I get minus 6, I get minus 3. My bad! This doesn't have a solution. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. I didn't see that, I just saw that now. So, it must be the case that this is 7 and this is 1, and then we actually do get the solution. Now when I subtract, I get this is boom, ba da boom. This is going to be 2 times 3 to the z is equal to 6. 3 to the z is equal to um, 3. And then, boom, z is 1 from here. We have z is equal to 1. And then y is 2. And x is equal to 4. And that's how we solve the problem. We really said just like, hey, we came to this conclusion. Like we said first, hey, that is their solution. Yes, then we have this by located remainders divided by 4, both sides. And we say, okay, because this is square, it's only going to be 0 or 1. So that forces this to be 0, won't be 1. And that forces y to be even. So we say, okay, now y is even. Let me write y as 2 times z, where z is an integer. And then I have this, right? I have this equation, then boom, I can factor it. This is sort of like when you can factor stuff out. In number theory, the best thing you can have is like a times b is equal to some constant c. A and b are your variables, like or a combination of variables. There's like things in parentheses here, but this is amazing. Unless c has a lot of factors, then you're in for a big job. But generally speaking, if you can get it to this, great thing. Just great thing all around. This finishes up our problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.